Hi there, Neil Clark of Fokker Piping with lesson number three in our How to Play the Bagpipe series. Again, I can be reached at www.falkirkpiping.com or on Facebook under Falkirk Piping and Glen Bervey Folk Duo. In our last lesson, lesson number two, we covered playing the bagpipe scale, that's the formation of the notes with the correct fingering. And just to recap, in this lesson we're going to show you how to play your first decoration or embellishment and it's what we refer to as the G grace note. More about the grace notes themselves later on but just to explain why we need them. In bagpipes the sound is constant. We inflate the bag, we start blowing the reeds, the sound commences. We can't form a rest, we can't play louder, we can't play softer. It's one co constant volume all the time. So we have to have something included in the music to help us punctuate. We can't use our tongue like we would do with a whistle. We don't have that luxury in the, the Highland Pipes. We do in the Chanter, as you've you just heard, but uh, we don't in the Pipes. So we have to introduce embellishments where, for example, we play the same note over a period of time but we want to interrupt that note to make it separate notes, then we have to introduce an embellishment to do that. The most common one is known as the G grace note. This is performed by using the high G finger. Now please note, for all main notes or themal notes, that's T-H-E-M-A-L, we have explained in the last lesson that there are specific ways to form these notes. Now for the grace notes or the embellishments, they are in general single fingers only. So to form the G grace note, we do not need the three fingers there. We just use the single finger to perform the embellishment. And there are only seven notes on which we perform the G grace note. That's from low G up to F. We can't perform the G grace note any higher up than that. Grace notes written in music are always shown as coming before, before the main note. And that's the way that they must be played as well. These are, depending on what book you've got, it's pretty f uh, early on in your book. In the College of Piping, I think it's a lesson note two. In Robert Wallace's book, it's lesson note four. In the National Piping Centre, uh, they cover theory and a couple of other things as well. It's actually in chapter eight. Please note, this is only three textbooks I'm mentioning. There are much more... Uh, textbooks out there which are, are just as good. So how to perform the grace note? Remember the grace note comes before the main note. So then to perform a grace note, a G grace note, on the note low G we start with the high G finger extended. Then once we blow we immediately replace the high G finger and that's our, low G, G, our high G grace note sorry, applied to low G. Now, that's quite simple. Only two things to think about. What we don't want is this. We're then playing the low G before the high G. Two notes only, high G, low G. So before we even blow, the G finger, high G finger should be extended. And we shouldn't really be able to go wrong. Now that theory applies to every G grace note to every main note. So individually, but 
But of course, the bagpipes don't quite go like that, so we need to learn to progress from one note to the other. Incidentally, what we'll do just now is we'll just cover uh, the G grace notes on the top hand. Now remember, if we're playing a note on the top hand, the pinky or the little finger is extended, playing a low A on the bottom of the chanter there. Have a look closely at this please. To perform the G grace note on E, first of all, as usual, the high G finger must be extended and the E finger is brought up. The high G finger is brought down and that's the grace note on E. This can feel a bit awkward with your antenna waving about there, but this is the way that we play it. Also, when we're going to perform the high G grace note on F, you will in fact have the three fingers extended, despite me saying it's a G single finger only for the embellishment. If you're coming to a G grace note on F, you can't avoid but have the three fingers up, but that's the only time this is going to happen. So then, to progress up the scale, we play the G grace note to low G before we extend the pinky to play low A, the high G finger must be back up again, ready to perform the G grace note on low A, with the low A finger being up before the high G finger hits the chanter to produce the grace note. This is what we should hear, playing the, ha the high G grace note to low G, followed immediately by the high G grace note to low A. Now please note as well that these grace notes, as I'm performing them just now, are much, much slower than they would be performed in a tune. The grace notes are written in sheet music as a 30 second note or a demi-semi-quaver. In actual fact, they are a hemi-demi-semi-quaver or a 64th note. They're written with three tails, being a demi-semi-quaver, in order to save ink only. So they're quite sharp, they're quite, they have to be performed quite quickly. But for practice purposes, please take your time and play them as slowly as you need to perform them accurately. So again, G grace note to low G, followed by the G grace note to low A. See how the G finger is always first to come off the chanter. What we don't want is this. You should have been able to hear the low A coming up there first. So it's an extra note, in effect, which is a mistake in other words. You must have the G grace note up before the themal note. Let's progress through the scale, again up to D. Now, moving from the D to the G grace note on E does require a considerable amount of movement from the hands. In fact, there's only two fingers that are going to stay on the holes. That's your F finger here, that's not going to move, and your high A finger at the back of the chanter. The simple movement, like moving from D to a G grace note to E, requires every other hand on the practice chanter to move. So from D, we extend the G finger and the E finger together. We then replace the D, making sure that the pinky is up, because we're going to finish on a top hand note here. That's the hard bit. The easy bit is purely replacing the high G for the G grace note. So, playing that, which takes a lot less time than saying it, we move from D to the high G grace note to E. Finally, moving from E to the high G grace note to F, that's quite simple after moving from the bottom hand to the top hand. Please don't forget as well that uh, what we've shown you is moving from D to the high G grace note to E, but of course you may move from any finger on the bottom hand to play a G grace note on the top hand, so you can practice that separately. But what we have so far 
is moving up the scale with a G grace note. Remember, the grace note always comes first. Now, that was moving up the scale. Moving back down may be just a wee bit more challenging. It all depends how your brain works. So, we're going to be performing the high G grace note to F. So, as we discussed earlier on, the three fingers will be off. Simple case of replacing the G finger to high G, and that's the G grace note to F completed. Please note as well that I'm not setting any limit on time as to how long you spend on these main notes, these stable notes. Give yourself enough thinking time to think what you're going to do to get that G grace note up and onto the themal note, no matter what way you're moving. We're going to have another look at coming back down here. So coming from E to the G grace note on D, we did the opposite from coming from uh, D up to E. So we finished on the E. We raise the G finger up, make sure that the D is in position with the pinky down, and put both the G and E fingers down together as one. If they don't come down as one, then we're going to hear two notes in there, which again is a mistake. Please take your time with this. Let's have a look at going up and down the scale again with the use of the G grace note. Depending which book you have, you will also have prescribed exercises. Perhaps at this time it would be uh, a good thing to mention Jim McGillivray's Rhythmic Finger Work. I'll say that again in case it didn't come off over very well. That's Jim McGillivray's Rhythmic Finger Work. Any, uh, Jim has produced a book which has uh, exercises there designed to assist with any problem in finger work uh, encountered and also actually just to, to instruct the finger work as well. I wouldn't really suggest that, this is a personal view don't forget, I wouldn't suggest progressing through the book from cover to cover but should you encounter a particular problem then Jim's book I would definitely recommend as a go-to to help you to overcome that problem. So, uh, G grace notes only, please remember the grace note comes before the main note. Eventually, you're going to be changing from to something along the lines of That's really the speed that a grace note should go at. But please remember that we should always be able to hear the grace note. It should definitely be there. Don't skim over it. One more time up and down. Having completed that first embellishment, you're really now quite competent in going forward and starting and playing tunes. But we have several more embellishments that we'd like to show you before you get there. And we perhaps will incorporate a couple of tunes that you can use with a few embellishments that you have. The next lesson will be on a further two grace notes, which are the D grace note and the E grace note. So, in lesson four, we'll be doing this. Only to C with the D. And only to D with the E grace note. 
Thanks very much for watching. Please, if you have any suggestions for these videos, uh, anything you think that could improve it at all, please let me know. Again, the website is www.falkirkpiping.com. Thanks very much for watching and happy piping.